with a new video. This is going to be my second in a series on Was It Jack Trammell's Commodore? What do I mean by that? Well, if you saw the first one, I talked about radios in the consumer market that bore the Commodore name on them. And we talked about whether those were related to our Commodore or not. And by that I mean the Commodore founded by Jack Trammell and Manfred Kapp that went on to become famous for the Commodore 64. Well, in this video, I'm going to be talking about thermostats this time, like this one right here. Yes, a Commodore th branded thermostat to heat and cool your house. Was this one related to Jack Trammell's Commodore? Let's find out. Before we get into the gory historical details, let me show you this thermostat. It's a wonderful example in the original box. I'll spare you the suspense and tell you right off the bat that yes, these are related to Jack Trammell's Commodore. The Chicken Lips logo on the box is a great first hint, and it's shown on several locations on the box. Next, notice they gave it the model number 2001. Commodore seemed to think 2001 was a futuristic sounding number, I assume because of the movie title 2001 A Space Odyssey. They applied that model number to their pet computer a few years prior to this thermostat. The last thing I'll show you on the outside of the box is the price tag. This was sold at a Mr. Calculator store for $149.95. How is that significant? Mr. Calculator stores were founded in 1975 by an investment group led by Irving Gould. Yes, the same Irving Gould who was on Commodore's board. At its peak, Mr. Calculator was operating 15 stores across 8 states in the United States. Commodore International purchased the Mr. Calculator chain in 1978. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. I already mentioned the logo on the outside of the box being a dead giveaway that this was from Jack Trammell's Commodore. In case you found yourself thinking, well, sure, but any company could have slapped Commodore's logo in the box and been willing to suffer the trademark lawsuit consequences. Well, this warranty registration card leaves absolutely no doubt. 950 Rittenhouse Road in Norristown, Pennsylvania was the location of MOS Technology Inc., which Commodore purchased in 1976. Here's some photos of Commodore's Rittenhouse Road location I took when I was there to visit. Instruction manual in beautiful condition. Finally, the thermostat itself. What's so special about it? It has an LCD display which shows the day of week, time, and temperature settings, and it has rocker switches and slide controls to allow you to optimally control the temperature settings in your house so you don't waste money heating it when you're away at work during the day, for example. It's a primitive version of things like the Nest that we take for granted today. When you fold the thermostat open, you'll see where you connect your home's thermostat wiring. Notice there's also a battery there so it can save your settings in the event of a power loss. We know these were legitimately a Commodore product. Let's step back in history now to talk about how these came about. The story of these thermostats begins on October 22, 1930, when Tom Hilton was born at White Hospital in Temple, Texas. Hilton went on to graduate from University of Texas with a degree in electrical engineering. After he graduated, he went on to work for Texas Instruments in their watch division. In March 1973, with funding provided by Seiko, the well-known watch manufacturer out of Japan, Tom Hilton founded a company named Micro Display Systems, Inc. At the bottom of this incorporation document, notice that Ichiro Hitori, the president of Seiko, was listed as one of the directors. Micro Display Systems set up an LCD line and began manufacturing electronic watches, and Tom Hilton wrote the book on digital electronic watches, I mean that literally. In 1978, Tom Hilton, president of Micro Display Systems, Inc., wrote a book called The Digital Electronic Watch. According to an interview I conducted with Howard Upchurch, the eighth employee of Micro Display Systems, Inc., in 1978, Tom Hilton called a meeting in his executive office. He opened the meeting with, We've got the watches up and running, and there's not going to be much change there. Watch sales aren't what we wanted them to be, and we're losing money with every LCD we make. To bring in additional revenue, we're trying to sell displays to other watch companies. 
What we need to come up with this morning is a new product that will use all the knowledge and expertise we have. That means that we'll use an LCD, MOS chips, will require very low power and a few other requirements. I've done a lot of thinking and I think a thermostat will do. Tom Hilton hired a consultant named Scott Jamison and together they came up with the original design. They contracted with American Microsystems Inc. to build their design and AMI produced LSI chips to drive the new micro display systems thermostat. So where does Jack Trammell's Commodore enter the story? Commodore got their start in electronics in 1968 when they entered the electronic calculator market in an OEM deal with Casio out of Japan. The calculator business really took off for Commodore and they watched their revenue and profits rise substantially every year. The first page of their 1974 annual report shows a rise in sales from 4 million to nearly 50 million from 1968 to 1974. However, it wasn't all rosy, as you can see that Commodore's profits sank from $2.2 million in 1973 to just 445000 in 1974. This was the first year where Commodore's electronic calculator production outstripped consumer demand. Jack Trammell spends the next few pages talking about that and other problems Commodore was facing by 1974. Because of this, Commodore was seeking to branch out from calculators into other areas of the consumer market where they could leverage their existing electronics expertise. They found that with a company named Optical Diodes Inc., who Commodore partnered with in 1975 to develop an LED-based digital watch. Commodore released their first LED wristwatch to the consumer market in late 1975, as can be seen here on page 7 of their 1976 annual report to shareholders. If we turn to page 8, it starts to tie everything together for us. Commodore's vertical integration strategy has been extensively discussed over the years, with the most popular example being Commodore's purchase of MOS Technology Inc. to avoid being beholden to Texas Instruments for calculator chips. That purchase is mentioned here, but Commodore didn't stop with MOS. As you can see, they also purchased Optical Diodes, Inc. in 1976. Commodore just entered the watch market in 1975 with their LED watches, and by 1976, the market was already starting to shift toward LCD due to their lower power demands. Commodore was quick to react to this and set up their own LCD line at their 901 California Avenue location in Palo Alto, California. Commodore planned to announce their first LCD watch in January 1977 and begin distribution in March 1977. By 1979, Commodore was established in the LCD watch market and they were seeking to expand their LCD manufacturing capacity and development capability. This is where Micro Display Systems enters the story. In February 1979, Commodore acquired Micro Display Systems Inc. It's a story similar to how Commodore purchased MOS Technology Inc. as a calculator chip supplier, but they got Chuck Peddle in the 6502 as an unexpected part of that deal. With Micro Display Systems, Commodore got the expanded LCD manufacturing capabilities they were seeking, but they also got the programmable thermostat as an unexpected benefit on the side. MDSI had not yet released the thermostat to market, so Commodore's Consumer Products Division would make that happen. Commodore's 1980 annual report says their consumer products division will be releasing the programmable thermostat to market in 1980. And indeed, retail ads began to appear for them in late 1980, as seen in this November 1980 Mr. Calculator advertisement. Unfortunately, Commodore's programmable thermostat was a short-lived product. By 1981, Irving Gold was already questioning the viability of not just the thermostat, but of Commodore's entire consumer products division. The Consumer Products Division brought in a mere 4% of Commodore's revenue in 1981. When you're selling a million VIC-20 computers, it's difficult to get excited over selling a few thousand watches and thermostats. The thermostat was last mentioned in the 1982 annual report, and by the 1984 annual report, the Consumer Products Division was no longer a thing. To close this video out, the answer is yes. Jack Trammell's Commodore absolutely did take a programmable electronic thermostat to market. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with a few other tidbits about it. Enjoy yourselves. I'll see you next time. In addition to selling these thermostats and retail outlets, Commodore appears to have also entered either an OEM deal or some type of distribution deal with other companies. I've never seen this documented, but other thermostats from my collection have been branded as MC Instruments and Johnson Controls. I had a Commodore thermostat controlling the heat in my house for several years, so you can see it here wired up and actually working. How exciting. 
The LCD display eventually failed, and my friend Santos sent me his thermostat to use for parts. But I got a new boiler shortly after, and the HVAC installer replaced my Commodore thermostat with a new, more modern one.